Hello and welcome to a video on Chance to Hit. So this is a video where I'm going to be talking about a mechanic that is very prevalent in a lot of strategy RPGs, and that is simply things chance to hit, and chance to hit as a mechanic. I'm going to be talking about a few different things and going over uh, two kind of recent games that use this, so Triangle Strategy as well as Fire Emblem Three Houses. So I'm also going to be doing a playthrough while I'm making these types of videos. So in this case, the playthrough is going to be me doing maddening mode where I'm not allowing monastery. So it's similar to Choopy's run where you're not allowed to do any monastery except for the ones that are forced. However, for the forced monasteries, I'm only going to be completing quests and doing nothing else aside from that. So I'm not allowed to recruit, uh, no DLC, no auxiliary battles. The only thing I'm allowed to do is seminar and rest, and that's it. And anytime there's a forced monastery, I have to just complete the necessary quest to continue, and that's it. Uh, same thing with like a forced battle, because I believe it is a forced battle. Uh, but we're going to be talking about chance to hit. I have a few bullet points to go off of while also going over this map. Okay, so chance to hit, as you can see here, is one of the fundamental mechanics of games like Fire Emblem and Triangle Strategy, Final Fantasy Tactics, games like this. Uh, games where the player doesn't have like aiming, like you can't actually aim your attacks or specifically go out of your way to hit something physically. You have to use a unit to attack and it's like you're kind of like an overseer or a general and you're moving units and having them attack things. And it introduces chance to combat. So 85% chance is very high, uh, more than likely he's going, Byleth in this case, well actually Gyleth in this case, is going to hit this enemy unit. So let's go smack him, or not. Okay, so we actually missed, and then he counterattacked us for 6 damage with an 88% chance. So that basic attack, like even though it seemed surefire, this is like something you have to calculate in when you're playing uh, games like Fire Emblem especially. So now that I have all these other units that can act, I can do other things, like aside from just like chill out and do nothing, like I have more units that can take action. So in this case, I have a 78% chance to hit with uh, an increased accuracy from Byleth being next to this enemy. So in this case, I'm being rewarded positionally with an accuracy increase. So let's see if that pans out. Okay, so we're able to land the hit. So we took two... It's actually three hits worth of damage on counterattacks. This enemy is below half. He's going to go attack Edelgard. That's what the combat forecast is saying. Uh, so what she'll do is she'll just move over here. Because she is not going to be run at all, so I don't want her to get attacked. The reason for this is I'm trying to get XP uh, to... I'm trying to get Class Master and XP because I'm going to have no auxiliary battles, no DLC, um, no monastery. So everything that I do is going to be in these battles. So the chance to hit mechanic is essentially, it's essentially removing control. So like if every hit, if every attack always hit, then these games would just be an issue of moving units and attacking things and just adding up damage. But because missing is a thing, you have to factor that in to your strategy. So if you could never miss, you would always be attacking and there would be no contingency. There wouldn't be any, oh, well, I have to... This has to land, then this has to land. There would be no planning, essentially. So, the fact that it's in this game by default kind of discourages just, like, mindlessly being aggressive and killing enemies because you truly don't know. Like, a 90% chance can still miss. And two 90% chances could both miss, even though it's statistically unlikely. It can still happen. So, the fact that that's always present, in a way, adds to... The skill ceiling of the game even though it seems counterintuitive because like you're essentially just randomly missing and it's it's like it, 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 there's like this aspect of controlled risk so instead of just having guaranteed hits you have like a, a pretty high chance to hit and then you kind of have to plan for a contingency if a unit misses so for example if you look at all the enemies near your unit and those enemies have lethal damage on that unit if they all were to attack that unit that unit could die, right? So you have to be able to calculate out what's going to happen if one unit misses, if two units miss. So this this baseline accuracy, even though it seems like a very simplistic mechanic, actually is a little bit more nuanced than it seems. 
and it actually adds a pretty big element of skill uh, to the game because you just can't mindlessly you know, push into enemy territory. Like if we had like five or six allies and each enemy gets killed in two hits, we could just guarantee kill all of these, right? We don't have to think about what weapon they're using, uh, what they can do on a counter attack, uh, you know, how much damage we're going to take when they hit us back, and then if uh, another dude can follow us up. So just, just by having the chance to hit, the game has like essentially an increased skill ceiling. Now obviously there are better ways to implement these systems, so there's a game that I used to play on the GameCube called Gladius. And in Gladius, you there were three attack zones. So when you initiated an attack, there would be a slider that appears, and then like a line moves across the slider, and whenever you hit A is when it executes the attack. And there was like an 80 like 80% 80 of that slider was yellow, which was like 80 to 90 percent hit rate and mate like medium damage. 10 percent was red. And if you got it in the red, it was a guaranteed hit with crit damage. And then if you got it in the blue, which was right after, it was a miss. So essentially, if you miss the timing on getting it in the crit, you'll miss completely. And then if you go in the yellow, your average, you'll, you'll be better on average, but you don't get rewarded as much because you don't get the crit damage. So there was more to it than just, you know, attacking the enemy and things going favorably based on randomness. There was an element of timing skill, whereas in a game like Fire Emblem, everything is about positional, like positional play and also weapon triangle, like the like weapon triangulating is what I refer to it as sometimes. It's like kind of like a joke, like I'll, like I'm, when I'm fighting enemies, I'll be like, oh, I'll triangle this dude. All right, hopefully we hit. All right, so this was a calculated risk here, obviously, because if Dimitri missed, he would probably get hit twice, potentially, putting him pretty low and possibly in, like, range to get countered, like, killed by one of these. Uh, so what I'm actually doing here is trying to farm mastery for this no, this, uh, no monastery run, because you can't get masteries, like, no monastery, no auxiliaries. It's very hard to get masteries. So we're trying to get as many masteries as we can. Um, this is like going on. This is all in real time too, by the way. All right, so I went over the first thing, just the basic hit the chance, what it introduces. Um, one thing that's common in triangle strategy is follow up attack. So in triangle strategy, if I were to move Byleth here and attack this unit, uh, Byleth would hit, and then Dimitri would deal a follow up attack for half damage, and that's something that's very interesting because it rewards comboing one unit off of another unit. So the positional play element is kind of like more extreme and there's also this element of like front attack deals base damage no accuracy increase side attack is plus 10 percent accuracy back attack crit damage plus 20 or yeah plus 20 percent accuracy so this isn't present in fire emblem but i think it should be i think orientation in these games is actually a very interesting mechanic because it's kind of like micro positioning where you have like your macro position, like where your unit is actually on the field, and then you have your like micro position, like what orientation the unit's facing. And depending on the orientation, enemies can do multiple attacks with combos. You can do combos on them. They can hit you in the back for crit damage. They can hit you in the sides and back for bonus accuracy. So it kind of adds this extra element of positional play, where if you miss, if you make a mistake and you accidentally expose a back, now you're getting crit. Whereas in Fire Emblem, crits are kind of more random. And this is, this is okay, like, not everything needs to be like this. Like, not everything needs to be this extreme with positioning and everything. And obviously Fire Emblem's a little bit more faster paced than a game like Triangle Strategy. So, that's actually fine. Alright, we're gonna get these kids out of here. These literal children. To safety. Okay, so increasing chance to hit versus specific weapons or enemy types or like in the case of magic and some of the the fire emblem games magic types now this is a thing there used to be like i don't think the newer ones have weapon uh, or magic triangle but like the older some of the older games did i'm actually gonna have him equip or do this equip that that reduces his accuracy against the sword guy and then hopefully he gets smacked. It doesn't hit him on counterattack. Good. So we actually want to farm these mastery points because this matters for the first mission. Uh, but weapon triangle, I think, is something that should always be in the game. But for whatever reason, in three houses, you have to unlock it. And I think that's kind of 
kind of a mistake on the developer's part. I, th I think having the weapon triangle be innate is better. Now they were they really wanted to emphasize this like system of unlocking abilities. So like you unlock a weapon triangle after certain mastery. All right, I was hoping he'd keep going for Dimitri, but I guess not. We're still building support points, so that's fine. We can just hop in here. He should go for Dimitri in here. We'll just wait. But this this notion of uh, if you have a sword and I have a spear, you're gonna have less accuracy, and I'm gonna have more accuracy. This this is kind of similar to like the macro positioning in games like Triangle Strategy, where your orientation matters. But in the case of Fire Emblem, your weapon matters and your counters, like what counters what matters. So you have to like pay attention to what enemies are wielding. Uh, this game doesn't really have like Lance Reaver and stuff like that, uh, and like Sword Reaver like the other Fire Emblems do. But that was another thing that I thought was interesting where it kind of turned the formula on its head where it's like, oh, sword is always gonna beat axes unless it's a Sword Reaver. So like you have to pay attention to like what they're actually using in order to not die essentially, like this guy just did, which is very unfortunate. It doesn't look like we're going to get the class mastery in this mission. I should have unequipped Dimitri's weapons, actually, but we can still do that. So, all right, so increasing chance to hit based on what you have equipped, I think, is a really good mechanic. I actually don't like that they removed it from, like, the like it used to be passive. Now you have to, it still is, but you have to equip a thing. And so you have to, like, go out of your way to unlock it by, like, mastering a weapon tree or whatever. Or, I'm sorry, mastering uh Hitting a certain level of mastery for a weapon. And then once you get that, then you can equip it. So it's still in the game. It's just not in the game in a way where it's innate. You have to, It has to be unlocked and, and explicitly equipped. And when you have it, it's great. And then it actually opens up the game in a way. But I, I feel like it's removal for the early chapters is kind of kind of weird. Um, it's it's not something I was a fan of when I, when I found out. That they just straight up removed it. Like, I mean, they did. Like, they've shifted it to being an unlock, so I guess they didn't really remove it, but in a way they did. Alright, so we talked about that. Increasing chance to hit based on direction characters facing. I went over that. So decreasing chance to hit. So that's, this is another thing like related, related to chance to hit. Decreasing the chance to hit. Let's actually just equip this yeah so you can see here under normal circumstances this would be the most accurate weapon uh, because an axe hitting an axe there's no triangle being factored in but because neither unit has essentially the passive like sword breaker axe breaker lance breaker whatever because no one has that the lance can just be used against an axe whereas otherwise you know normally in the game in your average fire emblem title this is a bad idea. So, but in this case, it's pretty accurate, does pretty good damage. It's basically, it's almost a guaranteed kill at 87%. So it's pretty safe to do that we just pass, pass the turn here. All right, so we talked about a lot of the stuff I wanted to cover. I guess we'll just kind of wrap it up and finish this map here. It looks like Dimitri got a level up. That's huge for the first chapter. Looks like we got health and speed, which is good. Can't go wrong with those. Speed is good. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna get some help. So one thing to note about this chapter, you gotta get these dudes up there because Geralt is gonna steal XP from you. Unfortunately, he'll, he'll just like start hitting things and you can tank these enemies. They're not really a huge threat as long as you're in the trees. Um, but for, like, overall, like, chance to hit, uh, is it a good mechanic? Uh, should it be revamped or anything? I, th I think as long as there's ways to increase and decrease chance to hit, it's a very interesting and worthwhile mechanic, and it should remain in these games. Uh, one thing I'm not a fan of is how some games just have, like, really high chance to hit and kind of just reward, just kind of brute forcing it, just kind of running up, smacking things, not really planning things out too well. Kind of like how this dude's playing. He just like ran up and smacked me. 47% chance. I'm pretty sure we tank this. Yeah, we're fine. I think the other one can hit us too. Yeah, he can hit us from the front. 
it is possible that I die there. Like it's it's theoretically possible for a three like forty percent chance hits to go off. It's not likely. Oh no, he's gonna kill a dude. No, don't do it. No, Gerald. This is known as XP thievery in the industry or in the biz, depending on <laughs> in the biz, depending on how cool you want it to sound. Uh, now the one problem here is. I can probably kill this guy. I can almost kill him. I know I know for sure I can kill this guy, right? Like this dude right here. Probably kill him. Yeah, let's kill him. So Geralt is going to smack the boss. And we don't want that, but he's going to. Now, he can't kill the boss, but he will smack the boss. So what I might as well do is attack the boss. However, if, he, if the boss does hit me on counterattack, I could die. So this is exactly where, like, the chance thing comes in. And, like, risk tolerance, which isn't something that I went over, but... This is something that has to do with the game. So essentially, the upside of me attacking him is I get an extra combat XP, right? So I hit him, I get another class mastery XP. And every time I take an action, like attacking an enemy, I get a class mastery. Because I'm doing a limited playthrough... Now this is very specific to this playthrough. Obviously, if you have auxiliary battles, none of this matters at all. But because I'm doing this really specific thing, if I hit this and he hits me... He could kill me next turn. Gerald will hit him, putting him at one health, run away. He could, and then it's the enemy's turn, and then the enemy could kill me. So let's let's do this just because it's funny. All right, let's see. Does he hit me? Oh shit, dude! I might die. Oh my god, I actually might lose now. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Gerald's gonna. All right. Let's see. Does he kill me? Oh. All right. I think that's a pretty good way to end the video. Um, obviously I could have been safe, but I, w I feel like that kind of, I think that makes it a little bit interesting. Uh, also, what I want to do is I want to redo this anyways for this playthrough. What I want is to have Dimitri unequip his weapons, just keep getting attacked to get, and have both of them get class mastery. So I actually don't mind that. I kind of did that on purpose, if I'm being honest. So, but yeah, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this and this discussion, if you have anything to add, uh, anything like related to chance to hit, um, obviously there's a lot to talk about for this and there's so many like different angles and things that I could have brought up, uh, that I might not even be thinking of, or maybe other people are, you know, aware of or think about a lot for these types of games. Definitely drop a comment, add to the discussion. It's always cool to see what people have to say. Definitely like, and subscribe if you enjoyed this. I'm going to be doing some more Fire Emblem type videos. I'm going to be covering three hopes. So this is kind of a good introduction to that get a nice game over screen on the first chapter just from like because because you know if you calculate it out 40 percent is pretty low probably is gonna dodge but that's the chance to hit right there so yeah thanks for checking this out and peace